Okay guys, it's time to learn how to play the King's Indian Defense against the Fianchetto Variation. So let me start by just putting this position on the board. So c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. And then guys, there's a few ways that the white pieces could get to the Fianchetto Variation, but you could get it by just seeing um, pawn to e4, pawn d6, knight f3. Notice how it looks like the, the classical variation. And we have gone over bishop e2, we have gone over h3, but what if they did pawn to g3? Well, from here, there are two main things that you're going to hear people say when you try to learn this opening, guys. The first thing that you're going to hear is that there's so many different ways that black pieces could play against the Fianchetto variation, and that is true. In this lesson, I'm going to mention three of them. The first one is the very first system that I used for many years when I started to learn the King's Indian Defense. And this one, I actually learned it from a game played by Kasparov. I just saw the game, I liked it so much, and I tried to imitate everything that he did every time. Now, of course, I did not get the same positions or the same uh, nice game that he got, but it was enough for me to make it through the opening, make it to the middle game, and just play chess, guys. And that's what I expect from you. Even though I'm going to go over three different systems, I expect you to just not go to the one that you like and that's it. Try to actually go through the whole video, try to understand the ideas because you could use ideas from here to use them there. And at the end of the day, it is going to make you a better chess player. If not, it's like just learning opening traps. If your opponent doesn't fall for what you want, you won't know what to do. So take the time to at least get some of the ideas. Now, the second system that I'm going to mention, guys, is a system that I currently use a lot. I use it when I play online. I even use it when I play uh, tournament games. So I really want you to look into it as well. Maybe you like it. And then the last system that we're going to go over is the system that I recommend to you. This is the one that I want you to try to see if you like it. If not, you could just use one of the other two that I'm going to be mentioning here. And this last system, guys, brings me to the second point that you're going to hear a lot. Many people are going to tell you that you cannot use the same plans that we typically play against the, the classical. Like you see, um, when we have this position where they go bishop e2, e5, castle, knight c6, and then we do these plans with f5, many people are going to tell you that those same plans are not going to work against the Fianchetto variation. But well, this uh, line that I'm going to show you guys could actually help you keep it consistent and try to use the same plans that we use in the classical to use them against the Fianchetto variation. So let's get to it. And I'm going to start with the system that I learned from Kasparov. Then we're going to go into the other one. So after knight to c3, bishop g7, then knight f3, castle, e4, d6, g3. And now, guys, is when we have to decide what system are we going to use. Now, the very first one that I used was pawn to c6. And Within this uh, c6 move, there are some uh, sub variations and you could look into them. But the one that I actually uh, played was bishop g2, knight b2 d7. Notice that these are moves you've seen in the Pyrrhic defense, you've seen them in other variations of the King's Indian defense. So if you have been following this course, guys, you should be familiar with these moves. We know that c6 is a very flexible move, so is knight b2 d7. So this shouldn't be new to you. If you end up picking this system, it should be easy for you to remember it and get to the critical position. So after knight b2 d7, castle, pawn e5. This is the thematic move in the king's in defense and the pigs. We want to break on e5. So pawn to e5. And now, guys, the main line, or actually the, the game that I'm going to show you, the white pieces did pawn to h3. This is another thematic move. They just want to do bishop e3 and they don't want us to do knight to g4. Other move that they could do is something like d takes e5. That's fine. You could take back. Queen c7, and you have seen this setup, this pawn structure in many lessons that we have already talked about. So the other thing they could do is pawn to d5, but you're going to see in a moment that that's going to leave weaknesses. So you could do things like knight goes to c5, or you could do c takes first, c takes, and then knight to c5. And again, we've talked about how when they push the central pawn, they just leave weaknesses. So anyways, in this game, let me go back. Um, after c6, bishop g2, knight b2 d7, castle e5, then pawn to h3. At this point, guys, the move that I really liked, the one that Kasparov used, was queen to b6. So feel free to look into this variation. Um, again, if they do d5, 
automatically we could occupy knight c5. And then we could do a5 at some point, trying to prevent them from ever kicking us out. Um, if they take, don't even bother to take back. We're putting pressure on e4. So we could do something like this. And then even if they take back, guys, I could take with my bishop and I develop my last minor piece. I have a very nice position. And look, if I activate the engine, notice how it says negative 0.2. So this is a nice position for, for the black pieces. So let me go back. Just remember what to look for if they did d5, okay? That c5 square is very, very attractive. So, if I go back again, guys, sorry that I keep going back and forth, but uh, I really think this could help you a lot. So, once I did pawn to c6, knight b to d7, they castle, e5, they don't want me to do knight g4 to attack this bishop, so h3, and now queen to b6. Now, the main line, what I got the most when I used this, uh, this variation was not d5, it was actually c5. So, I take, then they're not going to take here, of course, they take on e5, and then knight e8. Now, when I first saw this game, guys, I was like, I don't really like these pieces back here, I don't see a clear plan, but if you look closer, you're going to realize that you're putting pressure on this pawn twice, and this knight has a very clear plan to go to c7, e6, and from there we're going to be controlling d4, we're going to be protecting the pawn, we're even going to be attacking uh, f4 in case the bishop goes there to protect the pawn. So to me, it made a lot of sense, especially after I saw how Kasparov finished the game. So after knight e8, knight a4, and by the way guys, this knight a4 is attacking the queen, but the queen typically moves because we want this knight to go to b6, right? We don't want our pieces to be like that. We want to move the, the knight, the bishop at some point. So anyways, knight a4, queen a6, bishop f4, and now remember, the knight goes to c7, e6, and then this knight goes to b6. If you know this, it's very simple for you to develop your pieces and improve them. So knight c7, queen c2, knight goes to e6, rook f to d1. So they don't really mind us taking on f4, even though we did not take, guys. We want to leave this... Uh, weak here and maybe we could take it at some point instead rook e8 we're putting more pressure in directly on e5 we're making this available for the knight or even for the bishop in case the rook goes to d6 we could do rook uh bishop f8 now in this game again guys this is already move number 15 and i just wanted you to see how to make it to the middle game i'm going to be going deeper into the third system that i want you to actually go into and, and play it but let me just show you a few more moves for you to see how the game continues. So rook d6 right now, and at this point, we want to develop the knight. But if we do it, they're just going to take on c5. So Kasparov did queen a5, protecting um, c5, rook a to d1. And notice, guys, how they're getting so, so aggressive. But in a moment, you're going to see how the black pieces regroup, and they get a very comfortable position. Now, knight b6... Uh, trying to improve the pieces. Notice how this knight is not letting the rook go to uh, to d8. And after knight takes a4, notice how when they take, they're opening up this file for the rook. So sometimes we don't have to bring a rook to an open or semi-open file. Many times we could just remove the pawn that is in front of the rook and the rook is already active because it is on a semi-open or open file. Now, I remember this game the most because of this pawn structure on the queen side. And you're going to see how Kasparov starts using it to create some counterplay on the queen side and take the initiative. So after a3, queen a4, offering the, the trade of queens, queen e2, and then b5, guys. Once they make contact, they're going to try to create a pass pawn, and the game should be pretty easy for the black pieces. Notice how we have four versus two on the queen side. They have five versus three on the king side, but it's not so easy for them to create anything. So after b5, queen e3, b4, they take on b4, queen takes on b4, and we're already putting pressure on this isolated pawn. From this moment on, guys, the white pieces start getting more passive and the black pieces start taking the initiative. So active rook goes to d2, and now I wanna know what would you do here if you were the black pieces. If you want, pause the video and try to come up with at least two or three candidate moves. Now guys, if you came up with a passive move, that's not what we need. We need an energetic move. Notice how they're going back. We need to make sure that we do something aggressive. 
we don't want to do h6, we don't want to do b6. Instead, the black pieces did rook a2. So now we're using that open file to put pressure on the weak pawn. So rook b1, and notice how we have two pieces already put in pressure. This rook that was active here, they were coordinated. The rook is really passive, and this rook is not what it used to be down here on, on d6. So guys, again, this is already move number 24. I'm going to show you a few more moves, and then we're going to jump on the other two systems that, uh, that I want you to consider. So after another passive move, we go pawn to c4, keeping it as aggressive as we can, rook c2, pawn to b5, bishop a6. Remember, whenever they do this, you should be uh, familiar with this already at this point in the course. We do not want to take, we want them to take, and then we take with the king, and the king is going to be controlling those uh, dark squares. So after bishop a6, again, we're not going to take, instead, queen c5, queen c1, now knight d4, notice how the last few moves have been pretty energetic. So knight goes to d4, knight takes on, on d4, queen takes on d4, bishop g7, king g7, and now pawn to b3. So the black pieces just took, queen takes on c2, and now guys, again, pause the video and think of what you do next. Notice that we are putting pressure on e5, they're also putting pressure on c4, we could take on c4. What would you do if you were the black pieces? Well, the move that Kasparov did here, guys, was pawn to c3. So now they have a pass pawn, and it's soon going to become a protected pass pawn. Of course, you could have also taken on, um, on b3, and then these pawns become automatically pass pawns, but you have to be careful with them taking on c6 and things like that. So c3 is, of course, uh, the best move. That's what he did here. And I wanted to take a moment to talk about this bishop, guys. Notice how that bishop hasn't moved. And that's okay. In the King's Indian attack, the, the Pyrrhix, the King's Indian defense, sometimes the, the Queen side bishop remains like this, and then later it comes out to help when it is appropriate. You have, you're going to see in a lot of uh, Bobby Fischer's games how that bishop remains behind and it is only developed afterwards. And in this case, it makes a lot of sense because we develop this rook through the A file. So anyways, let me see if I can go quickly through the remaining of the of the moves guys again i'm not going to be explaining that much because this lesson is about the opening okay so after pawn to c3 we have rook d1 queen goes to c5 and now again they don't want us to do before so they did before themselves so they force us to take and now we don't have the time to do before so rook d3 trying to just get that pawn but again we have two pass pawns are connected so after c5 rook c3, pawn to c4, they went f4, then we have check, the king moves, and then queen goes to d4. Guys, these pieces are just extremely passive. They're really bad pieces to do a blockade. So rook f3, b4, and the reason why I kept going quickly is because I wanted to show you this part. After queen a4, notice how the queen is attacking the pawn and it is attacking the rook. So the question for you again, guys, is what would you do if you were the black pieces? We cannot afford to make a silly mistake and let this go. So take your time and think of what you'd do if you were the black pieces. Well, the move that Kasparov did here, guys, was pawn to c3. And they just sacrificed that rook. Now, after queen e8, guys, feel free to pause the video and analyze this on your own. I just don't want to spend too much time on it. But the next move here was queen d7. So not only he gave up the rook, he's now trading rooks because the queen is the only piece that could go after both of these pass pawns. So queen takes, bishop takes, and there's nothing that they could do now to stop these pawns. So e6, trying to do e5 for bishop e4, or even bishop d5, but after bishop takes e5, then the pawn goes. Only one move to stop it, then b3, and after bishop e4, guys, we cannot do b2 because they take, but we have bishop f5, and that's the end of it. If they move, b2. If they take, pawn takes, and now b2 is coming, there's nothing they could do. Even if rook c1, b2, and that's the end of it. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave it here. I'm not even going to go uh, over that middle or, or end game again, but just know that after um, g3, the black pieces here decided to do c6, followed by knight b to d7, e5, 
and of course uh, that move of queen b6 at least i liked it a lot if you don't you could do something like queen c7 and just play quietly but to me queen b6 makes a lot of sense now you don't have to play it but feel free to look into it look at more games where they have used this system and for those of you who are new remember if you're here on the chess you could just go here and it's going to show you uh like the theory uh the moves that have been played and of course that's how you learn more about it you could look at the other lessons that we've had on the kinsey and the defense lesson number 72 where i explained how to prepare your openings so feel free to, to do so. Now, with that said, guys, let me go all the way back. And from this position, let's say we continue. Uh, we get the Fanchetto, d6, bishop g2. The other way that I like to play this, and I do this a lot currently, I just do, I ignore c6, I just go knight b to d7. And then after the castle, I do e5 right away. So it's the same thing, I just ignore c6. And the reason being, it's because I want to play this as if it were the King's Indian attack. So I'm using the same setup that we learned in lesson number, I want to say lesson number 79, uh, 80, where Bobby Fischer used to play this as the white pieces, but I'm using it as the black pieces. So typically it goes something like e4, then I take, knight takes, and I'm going to be using these squares for my knight. So what I do is rook e8, you're going to get the same h3, my knight wants to go to c5, so I don't really mind it if they do b4 right now, guys, because they're just opening up this diagonal. So I'm putting pressure on e4, uh, you're going to get this rookie one, and then this is the part that I really wanted to get into with you. When I play this, I'm playing for two things. Number one, I like to do knight e6 to remove this, uh, this knight, but I like to do it for the most part when they kick me out. If I could leave my knight on c5, I'm happy to do so. And then from here, I like to do two main plans. Number one, I like to do a5, and you should be familiar with this already. We're just trying to prevent the white pieces from doing b4. And I like to do a6 with the idea of doing rook b8, b5. And this is something that I, I took it from another system that you could play against the Fianchetto variation. But I like to mix it here sometimes, and it gives me really interesting games. Like I could do something like um, a6, so it looks like I'm just preventing this knight from going to b5, which is true, but more than that, I'm trying to do bishop d7, rook b8, and b5. So you could see something like queen c2, rook b8, bishop e3, bishop d7, and now if something like rook a to, b, to d1, I like to do b5, and I just go for it. So again, I have this plan, and I have the other plan with just doing pawn a5 preventing this. And in any case, guys, if they ever kick my knight out, notice how I'm never preventing them from doing before. I just don't mind it. If they do before, they're making my bishop even more powerful. But also, my knight always has this square on, on e6. Now, why am I showing you this and I play it myself, but I don't want to recommend it? Well, to be honest with you, it could get really complicated. Uh, it's not so easy for the black pieces to keep the initiative here and like I mentioned before I want you to have something that is more consistent with everything else that you already play because right now you might be like oh I'm going to memorize all of this but guess what after a month two months a year it is going to get tricky uh, difficult to remember if you have so many variations so let me go all the way back and guys the only reason why I mentioned it is because I want to give you options so if you run out of options you could look into it and, uh, and of course, you could try to play it to see how it goes. Now, let me go all the way back and let's talk about the third system, the one that I really think is going to be a good fit for you guys at this point in the course. Now, guys, for this one, I'm going to just go here. I'm going to activate um, the engine and I'm not, I'm not going to keep this active, but I want you to remember that you could use this fissure to go into the theory, okay? So... I'm just going to go over, actually, let me turn this off and we're going to put it back on later. The reason why, oh, and remember, I've been doing knight f6, but I, like I've mentioned before, I like to start with g6 because if we go knight f6 right now, bishop g5 could be annoying, all right? If you know it, you shouldn't be, uh, it's not a problem, but to me, um, I prefer to just avoid it. So just go g6, c4, knight f6. So you could get into the Fianchetto variation in different ways. So knight c3 could come out first, knight f3 could come out first, it doesn't really matter. Now, after bishop g2, d6, k3, 
castle again we're not going to do now c6 like we saw in kasparov's game we're not going to do knight b to d7 like i briefly explained instead we're going to do knight to c6 and this is a line that i use it myself and i really think it is going to be a good fit for you guys and again this one is going to allow you to fight for those same plans of e5 at some point if they close the center we could move this knight and do f5 okay so after knight to c6 the main line is going to be knight c3 this is where you're going to get the most now most of you guys are going to be asking what if they just do d5 and this is the reason why i wanted to activate the engine before for those of you who have been following this course guys we have talked about this for at least five lessons already whenever they push the central pawn without being challenged by one of our pawns they create weaknesses e5 is now weaker c5 is now weaker so c5 uh, nice c6 many times you see it even the pirx defense just to provoke a move like d5 if they do it then the move is going to be knight b8 that's it i know it looks weird we're going backwards but what this move does is it allows us now to take advantage of this premature push on on d5 this knight we should know is gonna find a way to get to c5 or it could be this knight to go to c5 so we might be doing something like a5 securing um c5 and then we put one of our knights there so this is what we're looking for guys you have to remember it you have to be okay with this now another thing that you have to know about the fianchetto variation people who play this as the white pieces they're not looking for a sharp game they're looking for a more positional slow game and what that means is that moves like tempos are not so crucial so you could just go back reroute the knight and it's not like you're going to get an extremely aggressive attack on your king or on any side of the board it's more strategic more positional more maneuvering so you're going to be okay with this and as a matter of fact you're going to see later on more moves of maneuvering and going back and looking for weak squares and, and so on so anyways they could do again nice uh, pawn to d5 or they could do um, knight to c3 now let me just show you more or less oh by the way guys the main line to be honest here is knight a5 but again i want you to keep it consistent notice how knight a5 is showing you as well 0.7 now so it's pretty even i just like to do knight b8 because that knight a5 could get a little bit tricky so just do knight b8 keep it simple and now just to show you how the game could continue they could do as you can see here knight c3 then we have pawn to e5 and then look e4 so let me just put pawn to e4 and i'm going to leave it here guys because you're going to see how this transposes into the main line even if they hadn't done d5 right so again let me go back here and after knight c6 knight c3 is going to be the main line if they do d5 we go back knight c3 e5 e4 and i'm going to show you how the game continues from here now we're looking for this kind of play we're looking for a5 knight a6 knight f to d7 trying to put a knight on c5 that's really important we looked at this when we went over the classical and we're trying to do f5 at some point now let's talk about this guys because some of you might be like you know what i already i'm not liking this i already lost two moves here with a knight going back and forth but guys you have to look at it like this is the price uh to get this pawn structure a pawn structure that we know how to work with a pawn structure that is going to give us what we're used to so we're going to be able to put pressure on the on the pawn in front of our most forward pawn by doing f5 by having one of our knights on c5 like i said before we're not in trouble here if you try it and you don't like it fine but i really recommend this variation let's take it from here so we just go knight c6 if they go d5 we go back to b8 knight c3 e5 d5 we go to b8 anyways just remember in the the fianchetto variation when they do d5 we don't go to e7 we just go to c6 All right so i've told you this uh many times you should already uh, have gotten the idea so let's see what happened next in this uh in this game so after e4 guys we have pawn a5 like i mentioned before then knight e1 knight a6 again very typical plan at least for those of you following this this course knight d3 they don't want us to place a knight on c5 fine that's when the other move comes in knight d7 so one of the knights is going to go there for sure so bishop e3 they keep putting pressure on c5 and now guys pause the video here 
and tell me what you'd do if you were the black pieces. I know you have never seen this before, but what moves come to mind? Well, I know that we have talked about C5 so much that many of you thought of uh, pawn, uh, knight to C5, but instead, we're just going to do pawn F5. And this is what we're looking for, guys. This breaks on F5. This is what's going to keep it consistent for those of you following this course. So pawn f5, and now we're trying to even find a way to do f4. We're trying to put pressure on the king side. And we've talked about how the pawn chain is uh, indicating that we should expand on the king side. We have talked about the other principle where we have to put pressure on the, the pawn in front of our most forward pawn. So that would be this pawn. So that's why we do f5. And after f5, guys, if they take, well, we take back with the pawn. We have flexible pawns over here. We're controlling so much in the center. This has to be very comfortable for the white pieces. Now, don't be surprised if you get a move whenever they take on f5, it's because they want to follow up with f4. In this case, we're going to do e4, and notice how we get a protected pass pawn. I have to say, um, this doesn't mean that we're going to be completely better here, but um, in this position, it makes a lot of sense. Um, for the most part, the white pieces are just trying to keep these pawns fixed, they know that they could block them, and then they could uh, maneuver their pieces to create some counterplay. They could even, at some point, do moves like the, like g4, trying to break this down. But in this position specifically, we have so uh, so much counterplay that it's not going to be so easy for them. Now, if I activate the, the engine, notice how, look, 0.0. 0. So it's a very even position. But that doesn't mean that it's not complicated. So whoever knows the plans better, whoever is more familiar, should win this game. Now, let me put this back. Because in this game, they did not take on f5. Instead, they just went queen to d2. So after queen d2, then knight a to c5, exactly what we talked about before. Knight takes, knight takes, rook a to e1. Now, they're using this rook because they're planning to do f4. So they want this rook on the f-file and the other rook on the e-file. Guys, this is already move number 15. So here we just play chess. Now, I don't want to leave you hanging, but just know, this is the opening is already gone. We're already in the middle game. Now, in this game, they went b6, and I know we talked about this in the classical variation. Among other things, we're bringing support to the knight. We could even do bishop a6. Now, at this point, you're going to see a move that the white pieces are going to do sooner or later when they play the Fenchetto variation. They're going to do f4. Now, guys, this creates a lot of tension in the center. So all of these pawns, now what happens is, and this happened to me in a lot of games, every time you're calculating something for white or for black, they have to. Uh, we have to uh, consider these captures here. Okay, what if they take here first? What if they capture here first? So this tension makes it really tactical. It makes it really important that we are accurate with your calculation skills. So if you've been training your middle game, your tactics, your calculation, your visualization skills, it is going to pay off in positions like this. If you are, if you have seen lots of games where they get to this position, if you have played them themselves, it is going to pay off here. So anyways, after f4, we have bishop a6, putting pressure on c4, developing the bishop, connecting um, the, the major pieces. And after b3, we have queen to f6. So now this rook is going to come to e8 at some point. So you're going to see rook c1, rook a to e8. And now finally they did e takes f5. Guys, if they take on f5, we have to consider, do we want to take with the e pawn? Do we want to take with the queen? The main thing to keep in mind is isolated pawns. We don't want to create isolated pawns. Like if we took now with the G pawn and they took here, I don't know if you want to take with the D pawn. So you have to be very careful because if you take now with, I don't know, with the queen, regardless of any tactics that could be involved, you get an isolated pawn. So let me go back because in this game when they took, the black pieces took with the queen. Now, if they take on E5, well, we get out of the way by taking with the queen. So f takes e5, queen takes e5, rook takes f8, rook takes f8, knight to b5, putting pressure on c7. So the black pieces just took, c takes b5, and now forget about this pawn ever moving forward. So we gotta keep the knight over here. We cannot let them put pressure on the pawn. Guys, from this moment on, this is a very comfortable position. All you have to do is something like rook e8, and let me just activate here. There you go, look, negative 0.2. So this is 
equal. Like this is uh, slightly better for black, but uh, this just means it is equal. So from here, you can play your game and at least you know that you have a comfortable game. Now, do you have to memorize all of this? Of course not, but you need to review games, lots of games to get all of these ideas. Now, I'm not going to go any deeper into this game because uh, I think this is enough, guys, for you to get the main idea. I think this justifies um, all of this um, nice 6 9 b 8 So let me go all the way back and let me actually put this off again. So once we see the, the Fianchetto, we continue with our king side and then we just go nice 6 If they go d5, we're going to go back and then we go e5. So we could do nice c 3 e5. E4. Now, some of you might be asking, what if when I do E5, they do en passant? That's fine. Bishop E6, and we're putting pressure on C4. Now, let me again activate this position. So look, 0.7, 0 0.8. There's one move that could be really annoying here for you guys, which is knight D4. Notice how they're putting pressure on the bishop, and they're putting pressure on B7. Now, all we have to do is bishop C8. Now, again, look at this. We're going back again. We develop the bishop, we put it back. We develop the knight, we put it back. But again, this is such a quiet position. Uh, when they do the fenquero, it is not a big deal. You're going to be fine. So, how could they continue here? You're going to see how they could do something like, I don't know, bishop d5. So, let's say they're being aggressive. They're putting pressure on your knight. They're trying to do knight to d5. That's fine. If I activate this again, look, 0.2, 0.1. So you could do something like a6, get out of here. Let's say they take, again, trying to be energetic. We take with the queen, knight d5. Look at this, They're gaining so many uh, tempos on my queen. I just go back and look, all of that hard work and it is negative 0.3. So all I'm saying is don't get intimidated. Don't see any ghosts, just keep it cool. Uh, if they did a move like, look at this, queen d2. Notice how the engine is recommending putting the knight back. So queen d2. And now you could do c6, you could do knight d7. The point is, you have a very comfortable position. Guys, uh, again, I'm not going to go too deep into this. This is already move number 14. Just play chess. You could do c6, knight d7, to go to c5. So many things in the air. And remember, not, almost no one is going to take on e5. I've played these positions, uh, this position many times, and people just don't take on e5. If they're playing with the white pieces, they're trying to be more ambitious. They're going to go something like e4. Don't forget, we're going to do a5, knight a6. So again, uh, knight e1, knight a6, knight f to d7. And now we're ready to do f5. If they take, we take with the pawn. So in this game that I showed you, f5, e takes, g takes. Uh, in the actual game, I think they just did queen d2. So knight c5, they take, rook a2 to, to e1, then b6, and then the bishop could go to, could go to a6. If they do f4, then keep an eye out for this tension. And again, guys, I've, I've seen you more games. You're going to know exactly when to take, when not to take. It, it all just comes down to calculation and keeping an eye out for not getting isolated pawns. And if you could create an isolated pawn for your opponent, even better. So like, let's say you take here on, on f4 and they took with the pawn. Then look, this is very nice because you get him an isolated pawn. So if I just go here and activate, look, negative 1.3 so it's not 0 point something it is more than that isolated pawns or pieces could come over and put even more pressure so these are little things that could offer you a huge advantage guys uh, i'm gonna go back again because when we get to this position so nice e3 e5 i wanted to quickly show you what to do if they take on e5 so look 0 0.2 now we're going to take with the pawn and the move that could uh, become a little bit uncomfortable is actually bishop g5. Notice how they're pinning you over here. They're trying to do something like knight d5. Now, again, it all comes down to keeping it simple and being familiar with what you're looking for. So believe it or not, we're just going to do the very simple move bishop e6, putting pressure on c4, and just connecting our major pieces. So this is just a very comfortable position. Now, the next move here for white is queen a4. They're keeping an eye out for c4, so we cannot take it anymore. And they're making d1 available for one of the rooks to attack the queen. Now, the next move that you're going to see here for black is a move that I want you to see it here because it just goes. But also, it is a move that you could use it 
in many other variations of the king's Indian defense and other openings as well. And the move is actually queen c8. Now, guys, this move has is a little bit weird until you get familiar with it. Now, what are the main ideas behind this move? Number one, we know they want to attack us, so we're going to get out of it before they do it. And second of all, we are creating this uh, battery to remove this bishop. So typically we get this done to us. Now we're trying to do it ourselves. So after queen c8, rook f to d1 makes perfect sense. And then we have knight d7. So our knight is again fighting for that c5, even b6. So our knights are looking for better square. So knight d5. So this is now getting a little bit more aggressive. And now we have pawn e4. Guys, we're opening up our bishop. Not that we're too interested on taking that pawn, but we have to, again, be energetic and create some threats. Now, in this game, they just went knight d2, not a big deal, but always keep an eye out for moves like queen c6. So they want you to take then knight e7 and they take on c8. However, in this position specifically, we just take and after they take on c8, we don't have to take on c8. We could do he takes f3, hitting another bishop, and they just lose material. So it doesn't work in this specific position, but always keep an eye out when you have the queen on c8. Anyways, knight d2, then knight b6, trying to remove that really powerful knight in the center. And now we have queen c6. Again, they want to do the same idea, but this time we don't have e takes f3. Now, at this point, guys, I know that you haven't seen this before, probably. So I want you to pause the video and think of what you do in this position. There's a move that makes things simpler for us and it leaves us with a very comfortable position. Well, the move is instead of taking on, on c6, we're just going to do bishop d5. Now, they cannot take us, we're hitting the queen. So the queen needs to leave. And in this case, they just went queen c5. And after bishop c6, knight takes e4. And after knight e4, queen e7, the black pieces have two choices. And this is going to be completely up to you guys. I have done both. It is going to come down to your personal choice. You could do knight b2, hitting that rook, but you allow them to do something like knight f6, which is fine. Or you could win an exchange by doing bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop b2, I'm hitting the rook. And if they go here, we could do knight c3, of course, with a very powerful fork. Now, what you get a lot here is actually, instead of moving the rook, they just go queen c2. And then after bishop takes, rook takes, you gotta move your knight. And this could get a little bit tricky, actually really tricky for, for the black pieces, because our dark squares are weak. So they could put a lot of pressure on you. And actually, if I activate this, notice how they say it is negative 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So even though you got the exchange, you have to be very careful because you could get in trouble. Now, let me turn this off and go back here and show you the other variation where you just take on b2, then knight f6, and then king h8. Now, guys, this is another position that if I activate this, it is going to tell you, look, 0, 0.0 is a very um, even position. You just got to play them both. You could you do it against the engine. You could do it against uh, other players and then pick the one that you like the most. And review game, guys. Again, if I go here, let me just turn this off. Uh, if I go here, you're going to see games played uh, by other players. So you see, this is this one This one was a draw uh, played in 2016. Uh, you could continue to, uh, to navigate through this theory until you find more games. And again, for those of you who are still in doubt, like, oh, I don't know if I should play this one, the other one, there's one thing that you have to keep in mind. For anyone who plays um, the Fianchetto variation as the white pieces, guys, they, trust me, they do not know all of this theory. The person that plays the Fianchetto variation for the most part is someone that wants something quiet, something that allows them to be solid and stay away from all of the craziness of the King's Indian defense. So, of course, they don't know everything uh, about c6, everything about knight c6, about knight b to d7, and like I said before, there's so many other things that the black pieces could do that they just don't know it. For the most part, they just know where the pieces go. e4, h3, bishop e3. And then they just play chess. So what this means is that if you do your homework and you review lots of games with this variation that you're going to pick, you're going to have the upper hand. Trust me, it is going to be really hard for you to find someone that takes you all the way to that theoretical line 
and they they're familiar with it so there you go guys um let me know how it goes just play it make sure that you save it here if you go to um uh, learn study remember that you could save all of these and you could access it later to reproduce it and memorize it so again we're going to talk in the comments let me know guys what you thought of these three variations which one you like the most and of course if you have any questions just let me know